All right, let's get started with the second portion um, and talking about Apache Hoodie and how it plays a role in a data lake house. So I'm Nadine, I am an Apache Hoodie contributor and I'm coming in from one house um, and I'm working with Wen today on showing you what you can do uh, uh, with the lake house. So um, let's go ahead and get started. So let's talk about the origins of Apache Hoodie. So Hoodie started at Uber in 2016 to kind of address the inefficiencies across ingestion and ETL pipelines during its hyper growth stage. So during this time, Hoodie was dealing with petabyte of data. And if we walk through an example of an Uber ride, um, there is a life cycle uh, of a rider. Um, so a rider you know, starts a ride, it goes through the trip, and then it finally ends, a, a, ends the, or the rider ends its ride. So there are multiple updates that can happen. So before Hoodie, there were large Spark jobs um, that were used to periodically rewrite entire data sets in Apache HDFS to absorb upstream online table inserts and updates and deletes, um, reflecting changes of the trip status. So if we remember, um, HDSF is an immutable store, right? So this process was not only inefficient, but also very hard to scale. So what does Hoodie bring to the data lake? Well, we kind of talked about this a little earlier, but one of the main things it brings is transactional um, guarantees to the data lake. Um, and this is really important when you're working with big data. So one of the other things that Hoodie really prides itself in and how it was natively built from the get-go was to effectively work with streaming sources where you can handle bursty writes or late arriving data and so on. So this was literally the inspiration about, uh, with Hoodie. So, um, so we talk about Hoodie and we get into the connectors and stuff, we'll showcase this a little bit more. And this is this part here. So if we take a look at this kind of overview, high level architecture diagram, Hoodie can ingest data from particularly any source, whether it's an OLTP database, uh, you know, any types of data lakes or data warehouses and streaming sources. Um, so once you ingest data, um, from there Hoodie will manage your Hoodie tables um, within the data lake. Like for example, today we're gonna be working with S3 to perform um, specific sort of services to either um, ingest or manage the data. Um, so once you, you know, for example, you clean the old data or you wanna perform clustering uh, to be able to, you know, maintain your ingestions as well as maintain your query performance and so all that, Hoodie can help do that within, um, within its platform. And from there, you can connect to any query engine of your choice that Hoodie supports to uh, be able to get the data and then uh, perform analytics or build some sort of data application that you want, that you want to build. Um, and so uh, with Hoodie, you can build near real-time applications. Uh, so for example, you can build a personalization app, so you can build a customer 360 app, and so on and so forth. So we talked a lot about like the different table formats, and it's good to mention that, uh, that Hoodie is not just a table format, but it's also a platform within itself where there are many services to ensure that you get write and read optimizations. Um, so one of uh, Hoodie has a set of table services for clustering, cleaning, um, and so on. So for example, if we talk about the clustering, you can schedule a clustering service and then you can create your clustering plan and then you can execute the service on top of it. Uh, we won't explore clustering today, but these are the various examples of what Hoodie, uh, what Hoodie brings. We also, I think there was a question about indexing. Hoodie has indexes that support write optimizations as, read as, as well as read optimizations. And there are a whole suite of um, indexes that if we want to get into, we can talk about. So who, using Hootie, you can perform record level inserts, updates, and deletes on S3, allowing you to comply, for example, with data privacy laws, or you can consume real-time streams, or you can work with change data captures or CDC. Um, you, can re, you can reinstate late arriving data and track history and rollbacks. Uh, Hootie has a concept of a timeline, and a timeline, um, you can see everything that's happening uh, to your table. Uh, so you create data sets and tables. Hootie manages the underlying format. Um, Hoodie uses Apache Parquet, which when touched about, and also Apache Avro for data storage, um, and includes built-in integrations with Spark, Hive, and Presto, 
and this allows you to query um, any Houdini data set using some tools that you're familiar with and love to use um, today. Um, so uh, in Houdini, we're going to cover um, consistent snapshots, point in time travel, incremental changes later on in the workshop. Um, so we'll cover, we'll go over some of the table storages that Houdini offers, which is copy on write and merge on read. And we'll go, one of the things we'll cover is how to do incremental updates on Houdini and to query those updates to see what those changes are. Um, so if you're uh, interested in learning more and want to get involved with the Apache Houdini community, you can um, follow us on Slack. I'm usually pretty active on Slack. And there's also you know, blogs that are on the, the Hoodie site, as well as videos on getting started and, and much more. So this is kind of a quick um, overview of Hoodie. And then from here, we can get started on the actual lab uh, portion. So let me go ahead and let me go ahead and um, switch my, I have another deck really quick. And then let me go ahead and switch that over. OK, so OK, let's do this. So before we get into the actual notebooks, I want to go ahead and talk about uh, some concepts really quick, and then we'll get into the actual, the actual lab itself. So let me go ahead and put this on presenter view. Um, I think that's right. Okay. So we're going to talk about the different storage types that Hoodie uh, has, and then we're going to walk through a little bit of the workshop. Um, and then we're going to go into looking into the future with the connection with, uh, with the integration between Presto and Hoodie. So this is kind of a high level architect overview of what we're, architecture diagram of what we're going to go over. So um, what we have in the data set today is we have some sort of like e-commerce example where people are checking their card or viewing item, adding item to cart, things like this. So we have a lot of updates, inserts, and kind of uh, maybe things, people removing things from the items uh, from their cart, so deletes um, happening. And it's all happening and getting started into um, the S3 data lake. From there, uh, we're going to, on the hoodie side, we're going to write the data and we're going to query the data. Um, and then from, and for, we're going to write the data to the hoodie table. And then from there, we're going to use Presto to query the data. And we're going to use the glue, the glue, um, the glue hive metastore. And that's the, that's how we're going to query the S, uh, the S3 data. So in the first part, we're actually in the Jupyter notebook. We're actually going to query through Spark. And then at the end, we're going to show you how you can query through the uh, Presto CLI, which is what Wen showed you when you were in, when you SSH into the Presto um, uh, EC2 instance. So I already talked about this. OK. So the couple of things I want to cover is the different storage types that are available on, on Hoodie. So Hoodie has what we call a copy on write uh, storage type, which is if you work with a data warehouse, it's, it's exactly the same thing. And then the other storage type that Hoodie offers is what we call merge on read or MOR. And we're going to talk about a, lot, a little bit about this. So a copy on write storage is really good if you want to have um, uh, a higher write amplification by a very low read amplification. And it's operationally, on the hoodie side, less, uh, less complex. So what I mean is if, you have, if you're working with batch data sets, and let's say you're, you know, every 15 minutes or every hour you're ingesting data, you would probably will, would want to use a copy on write table for, for that. And the copy on write table uses Apache Parquet. And then what happens though is every time you ingest data, uh, as you're ingesting data, there's like kind of this merge operation happening where it's combining the new data with the data that already exists on the Parquet file, and it creates a new version of that Parquet file. Because of this merge operation, it has a high, slightly higher write amplification. But when it comes to the query side, it has a lower uh, amplification for reading because you can just read directly in the Parquet files. 
I mean, and so this is what a copy on write is. We'll talk about what this difference is between a copy on write and a merge on read table is later on. Well, let's talk about what this what this um, screen is showing you. So with Hoodie, you have two different types of queries you can run on a copy on write or COW table. And they're called a snapshot query and an incremental query. A snapshot query takes a, it's basically like a current view of your whole table at, at what, at, at it, as it exists in that moment. An incremental query is basically just showing you the updates that happen between, let's say, point two and point three or commit two, commit three, or commit four, or commit five, or commit two and commit five. It doesn't give you the whole snapshot, but it gives you the just the changes that happen um, when you were ingesting data. So if we look at the blue boxes, we have an insertion of A, B, C, D, E, and a commit time of zero. And if you see um, the, the prefixes like file one underscore t0 dot parquet, file two t0 dot parquet, and file three underscore t0 dot parquet, we can see that these are basically ABCD is insertion, and these are the parquet files that it's being insertion. So if you did a snapshot query, it's going to be the same thing, ABCDE. And if you did an incremental query, you're going to see the whole uh, uh, blue boxes of what it is because it's commit time zero and there hasn't been any changes, and it's just the first insertion of data. Now, if we go to the orange boxes, now you see if you look at the orange boxes at commit time one, you see A goes to A prime and B doesn't change. So A got updated, basically. B, nothing happened. There's no updates on B. If you go on the second, uh, the file two, you see um, C, the C, uh, the C data didn't change, but D went to D prime. So there was an update on, um, on, on um, the D data set. And then E, there was nothing happened. There's no update. So it didn't, there was no new version of the parquet. So if you see when there are updates, the parquet version changes to a new version. And this is where kind of the merges happen, where um, you get the new data plus the existing data, and there's like some merge logic that happens, and then the, the new version of the file um, gets created. With E, there's nothing happened, so it's just still file, file three underscore T0 because there was no update happening. But if you ran a snapshot query on this, you would see the current state of, uh, of the table, basically. So you'll see A prime, B, C, D prime, E, because A prime and D prime got updated, but the rest stayed the same. But if you just wanted to run an incremental query and you wanted to see, okay, well, what changed between commit time zero and commit time one? Well, really, A prime got updated and D prime got updated. So you can just query what you want to, what you want to see change, and this is actually how you build an incremental ETL. You can, you can just see, get those changes. And if we think about a compute efficiency, right, if you have to rescan the whole data, that causes increased compute resources to do that. But if you can just query the changes, this is how you save on compute resources. So this is what Hoodie offers is incremental updates, incremental queries, things like this. Now, if we go to the red box or red orange box, if you will, um, we have an update where A prime goes to A double prime, B didn't change, um, C, D prime didn't change, but we have a new insert. Well, E got, e, e got updated to E prime, and then we have a new insert with F. So now, if you ran a snapshot query on commit time two, um, you can see that the current state of, uh, of the table is A double prime, um, B, C, that didn't change, D prime, E prime, and F, because F is a new insertion. And then if you wanted to run an incremental query on this, you get the changes between commit one and commit two. So you get A double prime, E prime, and then we have a new insertion, which is F. Yes. Just want to make a comment to connect some of the dots. It's a great slide. So I, I, there's a lot to follow here, I think. But um, I think the main takeaway is without Hoodie, then Presto is just working with files directly. It has no concept of uh, what are the changes. It has no concept of how to optimize the files so that I can regrade. So that's kind of the layer that Hoodie is really adding here. And the way that it does that, it has other metadata that it knows how to work with. That was kind of like the hoodie file that I showed you, or directory inside the data lake. Um, so that's kind of the high level thing I want to make sure you take away. And she'll go with other table types. But that's, so you notice that they're all parquet, but now the engine knows how to interpret these different parquet files and can do a lot more advanced kind of capabilities because of this uh, format. And if we talk about these changes, right, these are updates that are happening, right? Um, these are like uh, changes that are happening. So this is what's happening on the data lake, but he provides that transactional guarantees.